Welcome back, everyone. Welcome. I just uh, posted an update yesterday about our assembly process and how you're going to be able to get involved with that. So far, the response has been great. For those of you who haven't seen the update, we are going to be trying something a little bit new and live streaming our assembly process. As many of you know, my brother, Jeremy, is a watchmaker in Switzerland, and he's going to have things set up to where you can interact with him as he assembles your watch and be able to see everything from start to finish in real time. As far as we know, this hasn't been done before, and uh, we're excited to have you guys as part of the process, as is Jeremy. He's really excited about it, too. He definitely is. <laughs> so he'll be on his best behavior, and uh, I've said this before, but he honestly, for the character he is, he really is amazing at what he does, and you guys are really in for a treat uh, with uh, going through that with him. So today we're going to have another watch information video, a little bit of an industry video. These seem to be your guys' favorite, and uh, they're our favorite to make as well. They're really easy for me because my dad gets to do all the talking, and I learn right along with you. So we had a request, uh, John, if you're watching, thank you. We've had others as well. Uh, we're going to get to those. We'll, we'll get to all of them, but uh, we don't have everything in place to cover uh, some of the other requests right at this moment. So today we're going to go over how dials are made. Uh, it's, uh, there's more involved than you would think, and uh, there's not a whole lot of information on there. This is my dad's specialty. I, I remember as a child going to the facility he worked at in Thailand and seeing all the equipment that they had laid out for the dials, and uh, it's all really interesting. So uh, yeah, you guys should enjoy learning along with me on how the dials are made. All right. Uh, yeah. That brings back quite a few memories. We made about oh, almost three million uh, day disc, and I don't know how many dials per month. So it was it was a lot of work, and uh, we did basically everything in house. So uh, the basic principles of of dial printing are making sure you're working in a very controlled environment. Uh, humidity is humidity control is very important and that you're using inks and uh, base colors that uh, are easily transferable. So uh, those inks, they tend to become very expensive. Uh, probably for a, we, we paid about, that was back in those days, about $200, $200 per, per quart of, uh, of ink. So, and it paid itself out because if you calculate that over the how many dials you can make with one quart that's quite that's quite true. cheap after all so do the cheaper inks do they just uh i don't know if you're in a humid climate do they just bleed a little bit or do they fade i know you see the the patina dials uh, a lot of times the print will discolor or fade correct fading is the number one thing uh, with the uv light the colors will fade uh, and the second thing is the the ink uh, with uh, together with uh, uncontrolled environment will you, you won't get those nice lines that you that you think are, are are impressive with some dials and others you're saying like okay why can't they print a straight line this should be the easiest thing <laughs> there is but that's actually rather difficult to to come up with a with a straight line so having said that. Uh, the dial process starts with uh, stamping out blanks. Most all the dials are made out of brass, base plate, and after that you have, uh, you know, there's there's three or two ways basically how you how you put the base color on there. One is spraying, and the second one is is either with silk screen uh, printing, or or plating as well. Some colors you can plate, but uh, brass doesn't allow itself to be plated in any color like you want as as you can in aluminum so there are also some dials that are made with aluminum for the base plate specifically for that reason what is the purpose behind uh picking brass is it because it's a more malleable metal than say steel uh it was the easiest metal to use for for that and for soldering the uh dial feet to uh to the dial plate. So the dial feet are the, is, is the one thing that positions your dial in the movement and it was the easiest to do that. So that's uh, just the material 
uh, characteristics made the choice for the uh, for that for that dial. Hmm. So uh, the second thing is that is probably the biggest thing that differentiates uh, a good printing uh, versus an okay printing or a horrible printing is how you transfer your ink from the tool to the dial and originally that was always done with gelatin uh, pads gelatin is very very soft and it is a, a clear uh, it's it's almost it, it's softer than silicon silicon are the other uh, pads that are used right now and almost all companies they they, they, they only use silicon is that due to price uh, no, it's actually not due to price. It's with silicon you can print about a hundred prints per per. Well, if you're good, y you'll you'll print about. I got a in a shift we we could do about eight to ten thousand prints, double prints with silicon. With gelatin, maybe you can do two prints per minute, uh, and then you can make your car calculation how far you can go. However, gelatin uh, has a far superior quality in, in, in ink transfer than you have with silicon print. So if you, if, you look, if you look at a Rolex dial, they're made with gelatin. <laughs> and I'm gonna throw a picture up, if I haven't already, of uh, what these pads look like. This is what I remember the most as a child. They're, they're like these little uh, half, half balls of, uh, of gelatin or silicone, and they, they press them onto, uh, there's videos out there of plates, and I, my understanding is because the material's soft, like my dad said, they push into the plates, indent into them, and then print onto the dial. Correct, yes. So with silicon, that transfer is rather easy uh, because the, uh, the ink holds to the pad itself. With gelatin, you put talc powder over the gelatin because it is so sticky and the ink holds only to the talc powder and is very easily transferable because of that. But after you do one print, you have to prime the gelatin pad again. So it's a very, very slow process. However, the, the, uh, the lines you can get with gelatin pads is just phenomenal. And that's why that's why the high-end uh, watch uh, brands that's that's what they what that's what they use if it requires that. Mm. Uh, another thing problem with uh, with silicon pads is that they they tend to charge up quite rapidly with electrical charge, and when you have that, then uh, the ink it just shoots out left and right, and you you will not get any line for anything that you're doing. It's just, it's just horrible. Uh, that's internal charge as well as humidity charge in the environment. So normal uh, print environment is about 30 to 50% humidity. If you go below that, you can't print. If you go above it, you can't print either. Uh, so that's that uh, on printing. The, uh, the other processes that, we, that are in existence are plating processes, of course. Uh, very good plate, uh, dial manufacturing uh, facilities. They have their own internal plating. And uh, those are the ones that we, we tend to pick uh, because they can control everything in-house. And then they, a lot of what goes with that is diamond cut or surface cutting into the dial. Uh, which is very particular or very detail oriented. Uh, that is also something that is with good manufacturers, they have that in house as well. And that's something you'll notice in uh, macro shots, especially on hands. If they're diamond cut, at, at risk glance, you're not necessarily going to notice it. Maybe if it catches the light, you'll see stuff on the edges, uh, some disruptions in the light. But when it's diamond cut, the hands, you can really get up close and it should just be a clean edge. And yes. uh, 
makes pictures really well. And if you've wondered why certain pictures look like there's a little distortion on the edge of the hands, that's why. Correct, yeah. So you get you 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 do that in hands as well as in dials. Uh, in dials, when you do it, it's always a circular uh, fashion. On hands, the diamond cut is is straightforward and backwards. So uh, the uh, the next thing that is that differentiates dial manufacture is is the stamping is is hot stamping of brass. Brass is very formidable. You can you can make almost any uh, design that you want. So uh, a lot of times uh, you have you know you have two or three plates, and certain dial manufacturers they make everything just in one plate if it's possible, uh, because the edges you can get out of a, a hot brass uh, stamp are are if you do it right quite accurate so then uh, you have index manufacturing of course index manufacturing in a lot of cases is done by subcontractors but uh, that's where a lot of the detail is, is is made so certain dials they have applied indexes uh, that you that you glue and rift onto the dial uh, and they're all done separate plating printing and uh, and diamond cutting as well and then you have I need to go through it the, the most common use of of ink transfer is done with silk screen and it's the most it's it's inaccurate but it it is needed for big surfaces so big surfaces are always done with silk screen printing and this is the same method I think if it's the one I'm thinking of uh, where they'll do uh, textiles, right? Where Correct. They drag, yeah. They'll yes. drag it across the plate. Yeah, it's uh, you have a screen that you that you that you wax, or you put a plastic uh, material over over it, and then you just you know you you edge it, and wherever the the ink can go through, that's the that's the image you're gonna get. So. Uh, Silk screen uh, machines in the Far East, they cost basically nothing because they're just made out of wood with, uh, yeah, it, it might, might be a $50 machine, something, something like that. Pretty primitive. It's, it's rather primitive. So, so in uh, the hierarchy of quality, you have silk screen at the bottom and then the, uh, I don't know, the, the stamping with the silicone and then the gelatin. The gelatin. However, silk screen, uh, if it's done very professionally, it's it, it is a good print. It is something that is needed if you have big surfaces. You cannot you cannot patch print a big surface. It just it, it will not work. Okay. Uh, so it it's something that has to be done. Uh, and then you have other dials that you know you you've heard with enamel uh, dials. Those are very expensive. They're very difficult to make. You can have that polished in. Uh, you know, it, it's not a, a normal polishing that you do. It's a, a, a lapping polishing that is done, uh, which is very flat. And that allows you in the same token to polish basically any material that you want. So uh, you can you can lap uh, stone, uh, mother of pearl is done that way. You can use it with ceramics. Uh, our, our sports style, the indexes are are polished with this lapping process. Uh, so there's, you know, almost anything can be done if the hardness of it allows it. Uh, the material has to be quite hard. Uh, what is very important also is when you, when the, the soldering process for, for dial feet, uh, certain dials, you, you can see where the, where the solder, where the solders are for the dial feet on the other side. Uh, uh, I must say I've been I've been visiting dial manufacturers. Some uh, are very entertaining to walk through, and those are the ones you're like, okay, it was nice meeting you. And others are are educational as well, and uh, you you want to stick with the educational one and the entertaining ones. Just yeah, it's it, it's good to know that they exist also. Uh, 
other than that, you know, the, the discipline that is required is to keep your, your raw materials on the very high quality and the environment on the, on the high quality uh, and don't save any money on that side because, you know, within three to five years, if, you're, if your inks or uh, whatever you use to, to spray, it fades quite a bit, then you know, your watch that you have is, is not going to have the, the worth or the sentimental value that you want it to have. It's just going to fade with, uh, with time as well. Yeah, and that's the goal for, I mean, that should be the goal for especially micro brands is not to focus on just success in the now, but watches, I mean, watches gain a lot of sentimental value over time, as all of you know, with your own collections. And that's something that uh, we don't want quality to take away from that. So every micro brand's goal should be investment in the long term in terms of quality and longevity with the quality of your pieces. That's right. So whoever you're working with, uh, they will never tell you who they're using uh, and what raw materials they are using. But uh, yeah, walking through those plants, I mean, it's for me, it was always immediately visible because I, I, I was production manager for, for five years and uh, I, uh, you know, when I when I signed off for those purchasing orders for ink, they were between fifty and a hundred thousand dollars per order, and I was like, "Oh man, how are we going to pay for that?" But you know, it's it's not it's not the expense anymore. It's uh, the reliability of uh, of your inks that you that you're using. And back in the old days, some old days meaning 30, 40 years ago, most all dials they didn't have the process possibilities like we're having now. Back then, it was most all of it was printing with some primitive indexes, and uh, the uh, the the index, the tooling has been quite elevated, and the possibilities that we have with materials to use now has been quite elevated. But uh, you know the basic structure of dial manufacturing with ink, each dial or almost every dial has to have ink on it, and uh, make sure there's there's no savings in the ink. Now you guys know uh, why those macro shots of, for example, Rolex, how it's so incredibly clean. And then you get uh, macro shots of other watches. That they don't hold up quite as well. There's a significant difference. Maybe not so much at arm's length, but when you really get in there, there's a reason there's a difference. Uh, it, it's not just by chance and it's not just that their quality control is better. The, the actual process to do the dials is better. So I hope that was informative uh, to all of you. John, thank you again for the suggestion and we will see you guys next week. Take care. Have a good weekend. Are we ready? Is my hair messed up? It looks fine.